before we start, please watch my previous video. The link will be in the description. Congratulations to Margaret. I miss Christine already, yet I admire Margaret already, and I look forward to seeing her further potential wins. Congratulations to both. She had a great run, and we'll see her again in the Tournament of Champions, which Ken confirmed when he introduced the game after Margaret won. Ken Jennings' introduction was, Our new champion, Margaret Shelton, pulled off an impressive win in yesterday's show, defeating a strong champion and a four-day winner, Christine Welchel. There's a good chance we'll see Christine again this fall in the Tournament of Champions. But in the meantime, let me welcome Christine Ujjal to the show. Christy is so close to Christine. Also the dark hair, bangs, and yellow sweater. She looks kind of like Maria Przinsky. Margaret seemed a lot more nervous and soft-spoken today. I guess she didn't seem too confident in herself. In fact, she was hesitant when she got the first question correct. She didn't sound too sure of herself, even though she's doing great. Margaret ended the first round winning 6,600. Ujjal was in second place at 5,200. And Christy was in third place at 1,600. Margaret got both of the daily doubles in double jeopardy. The first year was 3,000, answered correctly, and in the form of a question, and that took her to 18,800. The second, she asked, may I please wager 3,000? She was already at 20,800 by the time she got the second daily double, so she's already doing excellent. After she asked, may I please wager 3,000? Ken told her, yes, and only because he asked so politely. She smiled. At this point, I noticed she was progressively getting more anxious. She unfortunately answered wrong, and acknowledged she answered wrong and went down to 17,800. Margaret ended double jeopardy winning 19,400. Ujjal was in second place at 14,400, and Christy was in the lead at $7,600. The final jeopardy category was art museums. The question was, before its 1959 opening, 21 artists protested its design, saying it would make paintings look tilted and askew. The only building I know that's tilted is the Leaning Tower of Pisa which could have potentially inspired the museum. Probably not. The answer was the Guggenheim Museum, which all three contestants answered correctly. Margaret wagered 5,000 and that took her final score to 24,400 and a two-day total of $41,000 even. Jeopardy uploaded, playing Jeopardy is a lot like getting married, which was overheard on set, which made me realize something rather strange in my life. I thought a lot more about trying out for Jeopardy than I ever anticipated getting married. I'm single and never been married, and I never tried out for Jeopardy, so I know how playing Jeopardy is like even less. Well, the only Jeopardy I played was the video games, and that doesn't really count. Margaret admitted she was scared tonight as she asked, Does it ever get less scary? Christy and the audience laugh after Ken asked, Playing Jeopardy? Ken then asked Margaret with the emotions like, Terror. Then Ken asked to compare it to something in non-Jeopardy life for people who are watching. Then we get to the title of the video. It's a little bit like getting married. Like, you yeah. want to do it, but it's but you're scared, you know? They all laugh before the video ends in Ken's comment. It's a much shorter commitment <laughs> from the guy who won 74 games. <laughs> so now I have to ask, how is it like getting married? Compared to something non-marriage related to the single people out there, or by single people, in this case, me. <laughs> Ken introduced the following game answering Margaret's question. At the end of yesterday's show, our two-day champion Margaret Shelton turned to me and asked a simple question, and then it shows the overheard on set clip that we just took a look at. Does it ever get less scary? Christy and the audience laugh after Ken asked, playing Jeopardy? Ken continues, my answer, Margaret, now that I had a little more time to think about it, is no, not really. The audience laughs. You just get better at pretending you're not terrified in this very weird situation. Let me wish good luck to our newcomers, Ryan and Lewis. I hope you all have a as non-scary game with us as possible. Ryan got the first daily double for 600, unfortunately didn't answer, and went down to 2,000. Lewis ended the first round winning 3,800. Marco was in second place at 4,600, and Ryan was in the lead at 5,200. The first category introduced in Double Jeopardy was 1972, 50 years ago. That's pretty crazy. Lewis got the first daily double in Double Jeopardy, wagered 2,000, which was the amount the question was already worth, unfortunately answered wrong and went down to 5,800. After Margaret answers, what is the shape of water? Ken points out, you seem puzzled like you didn't see that in Esperanto. Margaret laughs and I hope that helped her feel less terrified. He got both daily doubles. Ryan got the second daily double in Double Jeopardy. He made it a true daily double. Fortunately for him, this is one of the easier daily doubles. The question was, in 2021, Gary Avis danced Virgil in a royal opera house production commemorating the 700th anniversary of this poet's death. The answer was Dante Alighieri, and that took in a $14,400. The 
Dante died on September 1321, which would have made the timing for the spooky literature I plan to do in October that much better. Margaret ended Double Jeopardy winning $8,600. Lewis was in third place at $8,200, and Ryan was in the lead at $14,800. Looks like it's a non-scary game for Ryan. The final Jeopardy category was European cities. The question was, Pizzo means protection money. The audio Pizzo movement was found in the city in 2004. The only regions I could possibly think of are Venice, Florence, and Sicily, all of which seem too obvious. The answer was Palermo, the capital of Sicily where this anti-mafia program started. Margaret and Lewis answered correctly. Ryan didn't answer. He risked 2401 and went down to $12,399. Margaret wagered everything and that took her final score to $17,200 and a three-day total of $58,200. Ken asked, is it getting less scary? Margaret smiled and answered, no. No, not at all, Ken added. Ken introduced the following game. You know, as we began this week, it was three-day champion Christy Welchel who was competing to win her fourth game and become the first four-day winner since our super champ Amy Schneider competed her 40-game run on the show. She succeeded today as we wrap up the week. It's our current champion, Margaret Shelton, who defeated Christy, who is going for her fourth victory. Will she make it to Monday? Or will Caitlin and Adrian celebrate the weekend as a new Jeopardy! champion? I already predict Margaret winning five. Around five to seven. She really has a lot of potential. We've seen and heard how shy and unsure Margaret sounded. Caitlin was the opposite. Margaret got the first daily double. I would like to wager 1,000, please. She answered correctly and went to 1,200. One of the questions is, in a work by L. Frank Baum, the scarecrow and this character are captured by a female giant and turn into a bear and an owl. I like how one of the few games Amy Schneider's mentioned, this question shows up when she has a tattoo of the Wizard of Oz. The mini anecdotal interview sort of followed a game category. Adrian was on a team that built the largest yo-yo, building the yo-yo that has the longest string. A yo-yo is a toy and not a game. Close <laughs> enough though, right? Adrian Alcala is from Great Barrington, Massachusetts. Now you built software for a living, but that's not all you built. You were also on the team that was going to build the world's largest. Adrian answers, yo-yo. Strictly speaking, it wasn't the largest yo-yo. It was the longest yo-yo string. We went up to the top of a 277 foot tall skyscraper and dropped the yo-yo off. And as you know, if you use the yo-yo, you have to give it a little flip at the, at the bottom so it will climb back up we had an electric motor and the flip did not work so it was an attempt caitlin's anecdote was about a car accident that no one believed she went through because it was april 1st pranks count as games right <laughs> caitlin McHale is a university marketing manager from philadelphia you once had a car accident and no one believed you why caitlin answers yep so i was on the way to high school and we go in a car accident on the way there so when i got into class i had to explain it to everyone why i was late um, and they were kind of giving me these funny looks like they didn't believe me, and I didn't realize why until I had to write the day on the assignment, and it was April 1st. Ken laughs and concludes, that'd be a terrible prank to get into a made-up car accident. That's one of my worst fears of something bad happening to me on April Fool's Day. I know Scott Joplin died on April Fool's Day in 1917, which had to have been the worst day to die. Margaret's anecdote was a Tetris game on a refrigerator. This was posted on their shorts titled, don't challenge Margaret's refrigerator Tetris abilities. <laughs> Margaret Shelton is a homemaker from Pittsburgh. You are a fan of the manual game that I enjoy as well, that you call dishwasher and refrigerator Tetris. Tell us how you compete. Margaret answers, I'm quite snooty about it. I can get anything into the refrigerator. I challenge my husband all the time. The other day, he's like, you can't get that in there. And I was like, Jake, I could get you in there. Kind of the audience laugh. Adrian ended the first round running 2,200 and corrected himself before Ken could. Caitlin in second place at 3,600 and Margaret was on the lead at $7,200. Margaret got the first daily double in Double Jeopardy. She made it a true daily double. I love her confidence in the following clip. I would like to make it a true daily double. And wow. I love her confidence. I mean, this is my shot, right? You seem so earnest about it. She wagered 7600 answered correctly, and went to $15,200. She's doing great. I hope this means Jeopardy's getting less scary for her. Adrian ended double Jeopardy winning $4,600. Caitlin was in second place at 5600 
and Margaret was in an Amy Schneider style lead at 24,000. The final Jeopardy category was literary characters. The question was, Dostoevsky wrote that this title man in an earlier European novel is beautiful only because he's ridiculous. The author of Crime and Punishment can only help me so much. How earlier is the novel? The answer was the Don Quixote. While none of the contestants answered correctly, Kenneth warns Adrian, Dostoevsky actually was thinking about Prince Mishkin when he wrote this letter, but it was a different novel, so that's not correct. While Dostoevsky was writing The Idiot, he was thinking about Don Quixote. My immediate guess was the Don Quixote, which I knew would be wrong. Now is the time for Don Quixote. What's also funny is, the last time Final Jeopardy category was literary characters, none of the contestants answered correctly either. Only this was Matt Amodio's third game, while the category was on Margaret Shelton's fourth game. Margaret wagered 2,500, which shook her down to 21,500. She's now at a four day total of $79,700. The overheard on set for this game was under the title, A Winner for the First Time in My Whole Life. Caitlin starts by saying, Not bad for a couple hours of work. Margaret repeated, Good game, good game. That is kind of crazy because all it seems like it just takes no time at all, right? And then suddenly, in some cases, you are a four game Jeopardy champion. We then get to the title of the video, A Winner for like the First Time in My Whole Life. Usually it's when a Ken comments that's the title that of the overheard on set, which strangely amuses me. Even the thumbnail is Margaret's reaction, so really, this is Margaret's time to shine. Ken reminds Margaret she won almost $80,000, then asks her plans, which she answers jewelry. She also talks about jewelry in one of her anecdotes. Margaret Shelton is a homemaker from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We've already seen a couple of different necklace options from me on the show, but you, you've been a lifelong fan of yours. Tell me about your childhood necklace. She answers, she answers, um, when gumballs used to be a thing, um, you know, you get rings out of there. Most children lose them or whatever. I would wear them until they disintegrated. Ken laughs. Margaret continues, so yes, I don't have children. I don't take vacations. I just have jewelry. Ken's final comment is more about the gumball. I'm disturbed to hear that gumballs don't exist anymore. This has been a sad interview portion for me. <laughs> I love Ken's humor. The video ends in all of them laughing. We are now on our fifth day. Let's see if Margaret will be the first five-day winner since Amy Schneider. Ken Jennings' instruction was, Welcome all to a new week on Jeopardy. After Friday's show, our returning champion Margaret said to me, This is the first time I've ever won a thing in my life. Well, you're now a four-game Jeopardy champion, which means today you stand on the threshold of locking up a spot with a fifth win in our next tournament of champions in the fall, alongside the season's other great champions. And who he, Tyler Rode, and of course, players like Jonathan Fisher and Matt Amodio and Amy Schneider, who went on to win much longer runs. So it's an important game for you and for our newcomers, Maureen and Clay. Good luck to all three of you. At this point, I realized how much of myself I see in Margaret. I don't recall winning anything in my life either. I'm, of course, much younger than Margaret, and I doubt I'll win anything. <laughs> as much as I hope Margaret wins and seeing her excellent potential, it would be amazing to see her compete against the champions named the preamble. Though I hope it didn't add any pressure by naming them. She was smiling after all. A bit of a nervous smile, which I hope isn't the case. Let's take a look at Margaret's fifth win. As soon as the game began, Ken asked, Where to first, champ? I wonder if he called her champ because she said she never wanted a thing in her life and was giving her confidence. Two contestants were in the red. Maureen sort of sounds soft-spoken in a different way. She seems humble and polite. She reminds me so much of Katie Reed, who competed in the Professor's Tournament. She's definitely having fun in the first five minutes. Also, I pointed out other times please was said after every selection. Margaret and Maureen said please after every single selection. I can't help point this out. I just admire the politeness of the two contestants. The mini anecdotal interviews were all interesting. While it was mentioned that Christine Walsh was the first four-day winner since Amy Schneider, and Margaret Shelton could potentially be the first five-day winner since Amy Schneider, Clay Cooper was the first contestant who scored a perfect 1600 in the SAT since Amy Schneider. Clay Cooper scored a perfect 1600 in the SAT. Clay Cooper from Las Vegas is an SAT and SAT tutor and... I want you to defend your existence, Clay. Tell me your qualifications for being an SAT and ACT tutor. Clay answers, Yeah, I uh, am the only person that I'm aware of who has four perfect scores on the high school standardized test. Two on the SAT, one on the ACT, and one on the PSAT. Ken adds, Not to brag. The audience laughs before Ken adds, Just a little. Then Ken concludes, So if you're going to an SAT or ACT tutor who doesn't have a perfect score like Clay, Clay answers, you're just not trying hard enough. What are you doing in your life? Asks Ken. 
Meanwhile, the amount of twins in Maureen's life is astounding. Maureen O'Neill from Rye Beach, New Hampshire, is an executive assistant and one of a pair of twins and not the only twins in her family. Margaret answers, no, there are five sets currently, so I'm a twin. My brother is a father of twins. My eldest brother is a father of twins. I have a first cousin who is a mother of twins, and I have twin first cousins. Ken comments, everyone in your family lives in fear of finding out they might have kids. Maureen answers, hence my status, Ken, yes. Wait, what is her status? Now that I said it out loud, I, that, that, that's just <laughs> could be. Um, I don't know if that means she's single or if she's not going to, she doesn't plan to have kids. I don't know. Margaret is an Anglophile and loves all things British. I love the money, the climate, everything, and it comes from being able to stay up late. If you were watching like Masterpiece Theater, Sherlock Holmes, you know, that kind of stuff. Ken comments, those are good for you, right? Your parents wouldn't let you stay up late for SNL or Carson. Heck no, Maureen adds. But if it's got a British accent in Jeremy Irons, adds Ken, that's educational. Margaret concludes, I noticed she's a lot less timid in this interview. He got both Daily Doubles. Clay got two of the Daily Doubles. The first, he wagered 1,000, answered correctly, and it was in the positive again at 800. Clay ended the first round and his score going down to 2,600. Margaret was in second place at 3,200, and Maureen was in the lead at 6,600 dollars. Clay got a daily double immediately at the start of Double Jeopardy. He made it a true daily double, unfortunately answered wrong, and went back down to zero. After Margaret selected science for 400, Ken thought she seemed excited. Margaret got the second daily double in Double Jeopardy. After Ken told her that she's 3,500 off the lead, Margaret thought she probably had to wager 3,500. I noticed she was less and less shy throughout her reign, and I hope this one moment meant Jeopardy got less scary for her. Notice how insistent she was? That's a great contrast from our first two games. Margaret answered correctly, and was in lead at 10,300. Is that the Western Wall? No. That's really weird, Margaret asked. Is that the Western Wall? Instead of, what is the Western Wall? I've never seen that happen before. After the final Jeopardy category is revealed, Margaret says no, to which Ken adds, Margaret seems thrilled already. Central America. No. <laughs> Margaret already looks thrilled. Margaret ended Double Jeopardy winning 12,300. One, two, three. Maureen is in second place at 10,200. And Clay was unfortunately still in the red at negative 2,400. Margaret and Maureen are quite close. The final Jeopardy category was Central America. The question was, a small river connects these two lakes that combined from close to 10% of their country's area. I can only think of the Panama Canal. I don't think that counts as a lake. This is a tough one. As the think music hit in and Maureen started smiling, then covered her mouth as she was laughing. As soon as the scores were revealed, Ken picked up on Maureen's laughing. You're laughing, you're having a good time. She tells him, I am, this has been great, you kidding me? Maureen, we're gonna start with you. You're laughing, you're having a good I time. I am, this has been great, are you kidding me? I love how enthusiastic she is. She really did look like she was having fun. A bit of a contrast from Margaret's shyness. Maureen answers, Quara and Mala. Her answers are as fun as she is, and her answers are as fun as she looks like she's having. Ken tells her, I'm afraid that's not correct, before Maureen informs, Guada and Malo is what I was going for. <laughs> clever and enthusiastic. I really love how fun and clever her answer was. Oh, I see. Guada and Mala, says Ken. Was gonna throw that out there, Ken. Ken and Maureen and the audience laugh. I'm sure like Guada and like Mala are lovely, but then Maureen adds, underrated. Ken continues, but incorrect, you're gonna lose 8,000, taking it to 2,200. I think Margaret laughs or sighs before her answer is revealed. What is slash are Nicaragua? Lake Nicaragua is correct. At the other end of Rio Tipi Tapa is Lake Managua. The capital is named for the other lake. Margaret bet everything, and unfortunately went down to zero. Hey, she appears to be quite confident in risking it all. Fans were rather critical of Margaret for risking it all because she still could have won. Some were commenting she could have risked 8,801 to still be in the lead. Wagering 8,801 could have put her in the lead at 4,199. I myself can't blame Margaret. From her first few days, she didn't seem confident in herself at all. She gave herself a chance to risk everything as a way to overcome her lack of confidence. You're well positioned for a tournament of champions, Margaret, is the good news. And that is good news for Margaret. If anything, I would have loved to see her in the second chance tournament, which is a unique concept. But Maureen, with 2,200, you are a new Jeopardy champion. Seeing how amazing both Margaret and Maureen are, it was difficult to decide on who I hoped uh, to win. <laughs> Jeopardy's overheard on set was, sometimes on Jeopardy, it's go big or go home. Can I ask, after you locked in your wager, you said you had some feelings of regrets. What were the regrets? 
Margaret answers, but I wagered everything. Ken adds, because there's a downside. Margaret agrees. Ken asks why she wagered everything. Maureen answers, I feel like every time you're on here, you have to shoot your shot. Go big or go home, basically, which is the title of the overheard on set. The audience claps and Maureen claps. Ken implies she's clapping because she's the winner, yet it looks like she's clapping for Margaret. Margaret has a pretty good standing for the Tournament of Champions, so it might not be her last time on Jeopardy. I want to take this in for just a moment. Jeopardy contestants range from humble to confident. As I was keeping track of the long runs between Matt Amodio, Jonathan Fisher, and Amy Schneider, all of whom were confident, there were players who were just as confident as the reigning champions. At the same time, there were other players who were rather humble as well. Margaret was definitely one of the more humble contestants, and she admitted playing Jeopardy is scary and compared it to getting married. I kind of wonder if defeating Christine played a factor into how scary it is. In some ways, Christine was similar, and she was confident after her third win by removing her wig to show what cancer recovery looks like. Margaret appeared confident in her penultimate and her final game by insisting on a wagering 3500 in her final double jeopardy of her reign, and even though fans didn't agree she should have bet everything, that was also a sign of Margaret's confidence increasing. I'm sure it would have only gotten better for her if she did win more games. When she lost, my immediate reaction wasn't to suggest wagering everything was wrong. Instead, I hoped it truly got less scary for her. My only question now is, how did she feel after she saw her taping error? Seeing the taping can rekindle the memories of being on stage. Ken is a former champion himself. Margaret has to ask if playing Jeopardy ever got less scary. Now I wonder how this would have played out if Maya Bialik was hosting. Not just for the question, throughout Margaret's reign. Mayim is excellent as a host, so I imagine she would have also been helpful. Well, congratulations to Maureen. We go from one beautiful contestant to another. We go from one 40 champion to another. And another. I miss Margaret already, yet I admire seeing Maureen already, and I look forward to her for the potential wins. If I were to ever be on Jeopardy, I imagine myself being sort of like Margaret. <laughs> Alright, that was sort of difficult to record because Maureen and Margaret, they both have M, A, and R in their names. And an E. Uh, <laughs> the, blooper, the bloopers for this should be funny. <laughs> so. And as always, thank you for watching.